Today on American Gladiators, his favorite sport is ice hockey. His favorite movie star, Stallone. But plumber Chuck Licata has got a few surprises, too. Uh, I'm going to have to pull out some secret weapons when I go against the Gladiators. Can't reveal them, though. I don't want them to know my secrets. They call him the Candyman because that's his business. But Danny Downs isn't soft or sweet when it comes to competition. Uh, running, biking, anything I do, I'm, I give 110. Suzanne Himka is constantly juggling her career as a dietitian and her strict training program. But at five foot six, she lives by one simple rule when it comes to taking on the gladiators. As far as their size, you just like I said, you just gotta go for it. As a Texas game warden, Karen Downey protects wild animals. But today, she'll have to use some of those same skills to protect herself from a different kind of animal. Yeah, you panic. I mean, but you realize that it's you have to get your head together if you want to you want to stay alive. Uh, 195 pounder, Bakersfield, California, call him the Candy Man. His opponent is Lakata. He says, doesn't like Saber a bit. Saber, he says, you got a bad attitude, doesn't like your bald head. What are you gonna do about that? I'm gonna clean his pipes. Gladiator Arena, the power is on, and get ready for a double dose of electricity. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, and glad you could join us as. Four contenders are pumped up and ready to strut their stuff against the American Gladiators, and they run the gamut from game warden to dietitian. Plus one guy who drove eight hours just to try out. His line of work, well, I'm gonna let my co-host, Lisa Miloski, explain that one. Lisa? Thanks, Mike. Well, Chuck, my friend here, is a plumber by trade, and he never leaves home without this. Now, Chuck, I understand you have a motto. Yep, my motto is, Chuck Licata is my name, and away go gladiators down the drain. Oh, boy. Well, I'm wondering if this uh, plunger will come into play at all today. Well, it's the intimidation device. I'll leave it on the sidelines just so they can see it, get them a little scared, and when they uh, start to get nervous, that's when I'll take them. That's when he'll take it. Well, we'll see what happens, Mike. Back to you in the arena. Well, Lisa, I know Chuck's ready, but he'll need more than a motto and a plunger to take home the top prize money of $2,500 and be eligible for our Tournament of Champions where he can win $30,000 in cash and prizes. Round one, event number one, swing shot. Our gladiators ready to go. It's Nitro and Saber. Now, let's go to the tail of the tape. Chuck, 25 years old, 5'8", 175, a plumber from Lake Ronkonkoma, New York. Daniel Downs, 31, 6'1", 195, a Hershey's account supervisor from Temecula, California. It's a white collar, blue collar kind of matchup. Swing shot, a 60 second game. Contenders simply have to bounce off those towers and try to grab either the red, blue, or yellow scoring markers. Reds are worth three, blues are worth two, yellows are worth one and look for a lot of mid-air collisions because the Glads will be trying to stop our contenders from scoring. Contenders Swing shot is brought to you by Sprite. Image is nothing, hey. thirst is everything. Obey your thirst, Sprite. The plumber in the black uniform, the account supervisor, Daniel Downs, in the white. Neither man can get close. Lakata has a yellow scoring marker. To make it count, he's got to put it back in a scoring bin. And I erred earlier. Chuck was able to get a blue. I didn't see it. Nitro had shielded him. Boy, what a fight for that one. The plumber calls himself a scrapper, and he has scrapped for all the points he has gotten so far, but we're winding down. Five seconds to go. Chuck's got another one. He's got to put it back in the bin to make it count. He can't deposit it, but he does get 
Two yellow markers, one blue one for a total of four points. Four nothing. Lakata wins it. Swing shot is supposed to be a non-contact event, but as you can see, a lot of contact. Chuck, very nice work. You told me before this event that you didn't care what event it was. You just wanted to get this thing underway. You were so excited. Yeah, I am. I know these guys hit hard. I'm used to the hard hitting. I got older brother at home, and I'm a hockey player, so I can <laughs> yeah. take whatever they got. That's right. And you don't wear a face mask in hockey. You don't wear one here. No way. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Chuck. And he nearly gets checked into the cylinder here. Nitro, wham, right there. That had to hurt. Round one for the women, also swing shot. Suzanne Hemka and Karen Downey ready to fly high against the tandem of Sky and Siren. There they are, the tail of the tape. Karen Downey, 31 years old, 5'6", 130 pounds, a Texas game warden. She lives in Dallas, Texas. Her opponent, Suzanne Beth Hemka, 24 years old, 5'6", 130, a registered dietitian from Chester, New York. All four women off at the same time, and it's uh, Texas game warden Karen Downing who gets the first scoring marker, a yellow one, worth one. Here comes Suzanne and Karen again. Sky getting high, Siren on top of Karen, and Karen's got another one. 40 seconds remain. Susan Himka getting stopped by Sky one more time. Here comes Karen. Siren trying to time her jump. That time she keeps Karen away from that cylinder. Oh, Suzanne had one roll off her fingertips. 20 seconds now. Here comes Karen again. Oh, she almost had a yellow. Siren kept her away. Sky and Siren doing a great job so far. 10 seconds remain, final chances here. Hintka almost had one again and she lost it. And this is gonna end in Karen Downey's favor. The game warden gets two yellow scoring markers, a total of two points. Two zip, the final. And to get one of those points, Karen literally had to rip it away from Suzanne Hemka. Nicely done. Back in the locker room, Daniel Down psyching up and lacing up for the next event. It's tug of war. Time to tug, round number two for the men. The plumber leads the Candyman for zip, but bad news for both contenders as they draw a laser. He'll be doing his darnest to reel both men in. Chuck Licata, one tough New York kid. He's only 5'8", but don't let that fool you. He can take the hits. Well, I play hockey, I've been abused a lot. <laughs> I could take a beating. I got an older brother who's kind of big, and I used to wrestle him all the time, wrestle him. He throws me around my whole life. He threw me around, beat on me, but I could take it. Chuck hoping not to get thrown around here. He will try to pull laser off that platform or pull the rope away from him. If he can get that red ribbon to his side of the midline after 30 seconds is up, he's got five points and a draw. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, wait a minute. This is going to boil down to a question of who left the platform first. Laser had Chuck off balance and then lost balance himself right there. Here's Larry with the call. In a very exciting and explosive match, the rule is whoever leaves the platform first is the loser. And in this particular case, it was Laser, so the victory goes Larry, to the contenders. Larry, Larry you're wrong. <laughs> I know that. Good job, bro. So the plumber opens up a 14-point lead on Daniel Downs. He's employed by the Hershey's Chocolate Company. His nickname? Yeah, you guessed it, Candyman. When you, when you work with a chocolate company or a candy company, it's great because as soon as you walk into the customer's office, hey, the candy man's here. And everyone loves to see the candy man. Nothing sweet about Daniel's it's attitude here in tug of war. He'll try to put Laser in a sour mood. Laser has to be careful. Nearly stepped off the back of the platform. 
which is what he did against Chuck Licata. Daniel Downs now holding on by one arm. He is on the brink of defeat, but somehow hanging in there. Lazer's now got him. Took him a while, 26 seconds, but plenty of effort, just no points for Daniel Downs. The candy man's undoing right here. Watch, he'll try to regrip, and that momentary letting go allowed Laser to give him the Hershey's kiss off. There it is, the dog bone, the double triangle. It's time for a whiplash. Round two for the women. One on one, our first contender will be Karen Downey at two points coming into this round giving away about a foot in height to six foot three inch sky. Own the bone, use that double triangle to pull the gladiator outside the ring, you'll get 10 points. Here we go. Karen doing everything she can to get some kind of leverage and catch sky off guard. Sky barely breaking a sweat. She's got Karen upside down, inside out, trying to get that arm in an uncompromising position. 30 seconds expires, try as she might. Karen Downey can't beat the limit. Sky. And the intensity of Suzanne Himka. She's next to face Sky. Her road to Gladiator Arena, a difficult one. Since I was adopted, I thought I had to earn my keep. So I thought if my own flesh and blood didn't want me, then who did? So I had to prove myself to earn my love. So I went through school, got straight A's in every single, um, all the way from kindergarten to, to college. I didn't know where my roots were, and so I had to deal with um, finding that out. I want to know. You want to know. I thought Barbara Mandrell was my mom for the longest time. <laughs> Suzanne still searching for her birth mother, but her adopted parents, Don and Esther, are here to lend support. She'll need it against Skye. Sky just whipping Suzanne around like a rag doll. Muscle moves won't work. 10 seconds to go. Sky seems to be cemented to the center of that ring. She's not budging. Not budging for any contender. Sky goes two for two in whiplash. Nice job, Sky. Nice job. And not afraid to congratulate Suzanne Hemka for an excellent effort. No points, however. And she trails by two after two events. A lot more to come here on the American Gladiators. The Wall is next. It looks as sinister and daunting as ever. Round three for our men, there it is. Our 32-foot wall and the look down from the summit where our contenders are waiting. Chuck Licata, the plumber. Get a shot of these shoes down here. This is awesome. Look at those shoes. I'm gonna give them a pair of mine. Watch out, Laser, they may be suction cups and Daniel Downs. He's looking for his first points today. He draws the Hawkster. I hope that bald head's not going to be up in the cloud so much by climbing, climbing rocks. Actually, Daniel, pretty good natured about his receding hairline, gave us these baby pictures to prove that he did have hair at one time in his life. His motto now, since I don't have much on top, I'll try to get to the top. But getting there will be a struggle. Here they go. Daniel on the left. Chuck Licata on the right. Look out, Chuck. You better get over that middle ridge there because Laser is hot on your heels. A leaping lunge by Laser pulls the plumber off. But Daniel Downs is looking good, and Hawk has fallen off. Daniel Downs, who's looking for his first points of the competition, getting mighty close to heaven. He's done it. How sweet it is 
Dan's first points of the competition. The entire Downs clan here. His wife Karen, his sons Evan and Sean, his folks Walter and Carolyn. Nice to come through when your family is watching. Daniel, congratulations. A time of 36 seconds. The drought is over. You're finally on the scoreboard. Finally, man. I needed those 10 points badly. Badly. You know, so often we have seen contenders come to Gladiator Arena. They falter, and then the support that they bring in the form of family and friends lifts them to greater heights. Did this happen to you in this event? I couldn't ask for, first of all, a better family, and second of all, friends and everyone from work that came down to watch me. It's been great. I really do appreciate their support, and I guarantee that's what got me up this wall. That and a little fear of Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's mighty sweet, Candyman. Come on down. Ten points. Congratulations. Oh, Thanks. And Daniel should be an inspiration for our two women, Suzanne Hemka. She'll have ice chasing after her. This is annoying, Eric. Can we take it off? Yeah. Sorry, can't do that. Karen Downey. Chalk all over? Yeah. Chalk off your face. I'm All right, Zap, cut me some sweat. Zap making sure that Karen looks good. Again, 60 seconds the time limit. The women on their way. Karen loves the great outdoors, obviously, and her job as a game warden has done some climbing in preparation for this event and moving pretty well so far. So is Suzanne. We have said many times that climbing this wall a little bit like solving a puzzle. You need to remember where those hand grips are and then use the ones that can get you to the top most effectively. Suzanne Hipka has made the crossover. Ice trying to close in. Time winding down, however, they're both women working against the clock. Seven seconds remain. Suzanne Himka is mighty close, but Ice has got a hold of her left ankle, and down she comes. Time expires. Karen still on the wall, but not close to the top. No points for either contender. And if you thought our gladiators were tough on the wall, wait for our next event. Hang tough, where Turbo's the man. Our four contenders are halfway home, and the plumber, Chuck Licata, with a four-point edge over Dan the Candyman Downs. Karen Downey leading Suzanne Himka 2-0 as our female gladiators are ruling the roost. Three more rounds to come, however, and the top prize of $2,500 to each winner still hanging in the balance. On we go, round number four. Turbo pacing like a caged tiger. He's ready to pounce here and hang tough. Daniel Downs up first. He'll try to get 10 points by crossing this grid of rings and landing on Turbo's platform. Our ring king closing in on the candy man. Daniel moving well. Now swinging to the outside. You better find a ring in a hurry. Turbo is backtracking. Whoa, Daniel's got a chance. Daniel's got a real chance. He's got a super chance here, but look at Turbo. Turbo's in trouble. Now you gotta get that momentum going back for you, Daniel. Go for it, go for it, go for it. He's just on the outside of that platform, and that hesitation has allowed Turbo to get back in to the swing of things, pun intended here. Daniel had to backtrack. Eight seconds remain. If he can go the distance, he'll get five points for a draw. And that's the way it's going to end. Daniel Downs has survived to the tune of five yeah, points. Good move. Thanks. And for the moment, anyway, the candy man has the lead. And the family once again loved it. Dan, you said you loved this event, but you were pretty apprehensive about Turbo. Oh, God, heck yeah. <laughs> He's the king when it comes to this event, just about all the events, so yeah. But you hung in there. You made some nice moves. Fear has a big thing to do with it. <laughs>
Well, if Chuck Licata is feeling any trepidation, the plumber's sure not showing it. He's got his fan club in place. That's his girlfriend, Lisa. Chuck Prime for a big effort here against Turbo. Chuck now trailing by one after Daniel Downs' his draw. Swinging right down the middle. Turbo waiting for the plumber to make a move. Hey, Chuck looking pretty good. Whoops, whoops. Turbo had to be careful there. One of the rules, Gladiator's not allowed to pull the contender off using the uniform. Chuck going every which way up there. Looking for another ring and he lost his grip. He lost his grip with 11 seconds left on the clock. Had his chance. Turbo put a lot of pressure on him. So the score remains 15-14 after four rounds. And the hang tough experience just as nerve wracking for Lisa as it was for the plumber. Lisa did everything but grab the rings herself. On we go, round number four for the women. Assault, ascending the platform for the Gladiators is Ice Ice Baby, and first up for the contender, Suzanne Himka, an outstanding athlete in high school. Try to get 10 here, that's the object. Contender, ready! ready. Gladiator, ready! Suzanne on her way. Let's that one fly, and it's way high. Suzanne, a registered dietitian, actually runs a junior gladiator program where each child is given a nickname, and then they answer questions about nutrition and the human anatomy. Neat little program. Suzanne's still alive. She's at station number three right now, and that one way high. Ice doing her darndest to pick Suzanne off. That one way high. A lot of time on the clock. She tries to make her way to station five. Nothing doing. Ice Ice Baby gets the job done, but at least Suzanne gets on the scoreboard. She fires four weapons. She earns four points. Our Texas game warden, Karen Downey, is next. Karen, a woman who takes her job very seriously. Our responsibilities are to try and educate uh, the public in terms of conservation and, and uh, preservation of the wildlife resources. Um, we check people's hunting license and their fishing license and check them, check them when they're out hunting and fishing to make sure that they're abiding by the bag limits and size limits that are imposed on fish and wildlife. I feel very fortunate that I have a wonderful job that I really love and I get paid for all at the same time. Well, good luck to you. Hope you catch something. Thanks a lot. Karen obviously does a little fishing and hunting herself, so this game of assault may be right up her alley. Come on. Come on. During her heyday, an outstanding basketball player at the University of Texas at Arlington where she earned a scholarship. The same kind of shuffling moves that athletes use in basketball are needed here in assault. Kara now safely behind the barrier at station number two. That one falls awry. Whoa, ice, ice baby does it again. Knocks Karen's pins out from underneath her. Down she goes, she can't get to station number three. She does get two points for firing two weapons. And after four rounds, she and Suzanne Hipka tied at four. Excellent work as usual. Ice, what's your strategy there? You nailed them both. 
Well, you know, it's a matter of how long you're up here. You get kind of the game down. And they were a little slow today, Lisa. Come on, <laughs> I you think know? They, they were. You got it right in the foot. Nice work. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. Ice, they weren't slow. You were good. And speaking of good, Nitro getting ready for a special challenge in Powerball. We're seeing, seeing how explosive he is off the line, uh, the way he attacks. I'd like to see what I could do against him. Round five coming up. The men set for Powerball, the most physical event we have on the American Gladiators. A look at Daniel Downs. He leads Chuck Licata 15-14 after four rounds. A look at Chuck Licata. Scored early, but he's been shut out in the last two events. That crackle pop, baby. Here we go. It's showtime. Ah. And Daniel Downs, candy man. You won a nitro. You've got him here. Powerball. 45 seconds of letting it all hang out. Goals in the outer cylinder worth two points. A goal in the center cylinder worth three. Saber, Hawk, and Nitro set to go against our two contenders. Great move past Hawk. He's got some quicks here. Very, 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 very nice move. He Tight roped his way down the outside and then went to the center cylinder and scored. That time Hawk stops him. Daniel gets a very hard earned goal in the outer cylinder. Chuck elusive, but not elusive enough there. 10 seconds to go. Lakata going for more. A big jam up there. And he pounded it home. That is it. Great effort by the plumber from New York. A man who once worked in a three-foot crawl space underneath a restaurant, just part of his job as a plumber. The only way he could do his job was to get rid of the rats down there. Well, he had three big rats in the person of our three gladiators, Saber, Hawk, and Nitro. You know, ask a good NFL running back how they made a great move or how they scored a touchdown. They can't tell you. It happens in the blink of an eye. Chuck, you made two great moves out there. You scored seven points, and I know you don't know how you did it, but we're going to give you an opportunity to tell us how here on the Slim Jim Super Screen. Here's goal number one in the center cylinder. Well, I saw the opening for the two. I took a quick look and saw the middle open. That's why I took a chance. and <laughs> paid off. <laughs> now, the next one, uh, this is a real Houdini job. How you got out of this, I'll never know. Oh, I don't know. I thought I was down, but I, my, I just stood up as hard as I could, saw the basket was right there, put it home. Is this everything you thought it would be? Oh, definitely, and then some. These guys are tough, man. You look at yourself as a representative for blue-collar guys everywhere? Definitely. Everybody thinks you can do it. Come down, give it a chance, see what you got. All right, plumber, way to go. The plumber, Chuck Lakata. A little high five and from friends and family. On to the women we go. Suzanne Hipka, Karen Downey tied at four coming into their match in Powerball. For the Gladiators, Zap, Siren, and Jazz. Gladiators have been very stingy with these two contenders. They promise more of the same here at Powerball. Karen using those basketball quicks to score early. Another nice move past Zap. The game warden is taking names out there. Susan Hipka, great goal there. Zap wrapping Karen there as Karen lost the ball. 20 seconds to go. Oh, another, another hard fought for goal by Suzanne Hipka. I tell you, she's tough. She's trying, she's trying to keep at it. I think she may have had the wind knocked out of her, but she's still going. And time expires. Give these two contenders a hand. Suzanne Hipka, Karen Downey. They knew what power ball was all about. Both women score four goals. And they're tied at eight points apiece after five rounds. Our trainers, Chris and Terry, making sure Suzanne is okay. 
Look at Jazz lower the shoulder, lower the boom on Suzanne. She goes tumbling head over heels. Still, she gets up. She keeps on plugging. She grabs another ball and tries to score again. A human pinball, and then Zap nails her. Pretty nifty with a pair of sneakers on, and hey, why not? Back in September of 1993, she was married in a pair of tennis shoes. A road paved with five potholes, the gauntlet. Five gladiators inside, it's crunch time for our women. Karen Downing and Suzanne Himka set the go. Inside the gauntlet, our five gladiators, Siren, Sky, Ice, Jazz, and the Zapster. Up first is Karen Downey, she and Suzanne tied at eight, coming in. Karen's mission, straightforward, get through in less than 25 seconds, it's worth five points. Get through in less than 20, it's worth 10. Karen, a former outstanding basketball player at the University of Texas at Arlington, has got the quick feet. Needs to use her hands a little bit more. And Sky really doing a great job of knocking her down and chewing up time, which she is running out of. We're now at 20 seconds, and it, it is clear that Karen Downey will not advance through this gauntlet. Despite her best efforts, the Gladiators pitch the shutout, no points. And that is a picture of exhaustion. That look on Suzanne Hipka's face says it all. She's tied with Karen Downey right now, but with five or 10 here, she will set herself up for a head start in the Eliminator. Again, today's winner will take home $2,500. Nicknamed Rock because she has tremendous strength in her abdominal muscles. Needs to be a rock here, but right now Siren doing the rocking as Suzanne cannot get by Siren in that first zone. Now Sky working her over pretty good. She's got Ice to deal with now, and she is running out of time. Ice cold cocks her. You got to keep your head up and you got to use your hands. It's been done before, but it takes all out effort to do it. Susan Himka, no points. 8-8, the score remains going into the Eliminator. No lack of effort there. The discussion between the Laser and Nitro. The event, Breakthrough and Conquer. It's crunch time, round six for our men. Good battle going on between Daniel Downs and Chuck Licata. Chuck leading by two, 21-19, he's up first. Laser will be inside the conquering, and Nitro is first up in breakthrough, a two-part game where contenders can earn 10 points. Chuck, a feisty little package of dynamite. Chuck's got some quicks. Pretty nice little move. Can he squirt away? No, Nitro knocks him out of bounds. Not before Chuck gave it a great effort. Laser, a ball of fire in that conquer ring. The plumber trying to go low. His head is being controlled by laser. That's what you need to do if you're the glad inside that ring. 10 seconds expires, no points for Chuck Licata. So the door now open for the candy man, Daniel Downs. Little of the fun, little of the blood. You gotta take both of them if you love it. Well, the candy man with 10 points here, or even five points, will take the lead going into the Eliminator. Back to work for Nitro and Laser. Contender ready! Gladiators ready! The candy man on his way. Pretty nice move. Not solid enough. Yes! He stretched out. Nitro had him at about the two-yard line. And before his knees touched down, Downs was able to stretch out and break that play, and he's got five points. A total of 24 now. He's got 10 seconds. All he has to do, all I say, is take any portion of Laser's body outside the ring. He's gonna try that double bar arm up top. 
Laser mighty strong and Daniel Downs running out of time and that is it. Might have tried to shoot the single leg but to walk away from this event with five points is a major victory for any contender. Well Dan you were a linebacker back in high school but you got some pretty nice moves maybe running back would have been appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> with this guy there I needed all the help I could get he's tough. Well he is tough let's take a look at what happened there you had a nice stretch tell me what the strategy was. Main thing was is just try and fake him out as much as possible and as soon as I saw the ball go I thought you got to dive for it that's the last chance I had so. And he scores all right. Nitro you're not smiling. There's nothing funny about it you know. Oh, oh there's nothing funny. He left. You did a good job then Thank Dan. Thank you much. All right thanks. thanks. They need to have something positive to look at. And so when they can see me on TV um, running around, uh, throwing people, fighting people, losing, getting up from the loss, losses and, and still going on, then they can see a brother that's, that, that's in shape, who promotes something other than drugs, who promotes something other than money, who's into fair competition and not, not cheating and cheap shotting. Um, so I like it. I, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to be a gladiator. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena. In a moment, the Eliminator will make two of our four contenders $2,500 richer. In the women's matchup, it is dead even. Suzanne Himka and Karen Downey both have eight points. That means they'll start side by side. It is a pure race. May the best woman win. Right now, Lisa's with both of them at the start line. Suzanne, your family has been here all day long supporting you. You told me your husband Tom thought you were crazy to do this, but he's been here all day. What advice did he give you before this eliminator? He said go for it. Okay, let's go for it. Karen, you have told you told us that you are dedicating this to your grandmother, Moselle. What kind of advice would she give you before this eliminator? She would just say, do the very best that you can and I'll be proud of you no matter what. We will too. Good luck. This is for all the marbles on course. Siren hamming it up along with Sky, our penalty enforcers. And the Eliminator is brought to you by Combo Snacks. Combo's the one snack that's twice as good. <laughs> Suzanne on the left, Karen on the right. Here they go. Karen with the basketball background. Suzanne with that gymnastics training on her side. And this is a struggle up the Versa Climber. And they're still dead even. Down the slide they will come. Next test, the hand bike. Look at Siren down there. She's rooting them on, showing them how it's done. Pump those legs, keep those arms working. Suzanne Hipka gets the draw. She's the first across, and now across the cylinder. She makes that as well. You know, Suzanne Hemka is adopted, and she is still searching for her birth mother. Maybe somewhere in America her birth mother is watching today. Suzanne, the first to reach the zip line. Here comes Karen. She lands as well. Final two obstacles, the wall, the treadmill. If Suzanne wins this thing, it'll be the success here on the treadmill. She's got it. Suzanne Hipka from Chester, New York, wins it in a time of one minute and 32 seconds. Well done. You think she's not pumped? Wow. Worked. You went for it, and you won. Yes. Thank you. You know, you said because you're adopted, you you need to earn your keep. Well, you certainly did today. Yes, I definitely did. You must be very, very proud of yourself. Absolutely. Two words. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God, indeed. You know, Suzanne runs a junior gladiator program back in Chester, New York. She emphasizes to young children. Uh, 
the importance of nutrition and the knowledge of human anatomy, and she gives them all a gladiator nickname. She's really got a story to tell them now. Suzanne Hipka, $2,500 richer. Congratulations. For the men, it's Candyman, Dan Downs, who gets the 1.5 second head start, but is he sweet enough to hold it? The plumber from New York, Chuck Licata, doesn't want to see $2,500 go down the drain. He's hoping to pull the plug on Dan. He's with Lisa. Hey, Chuck, guess what I have? I'm back with the plunger. You said never get in the way of a plumber with the plunger, so I brought it in for some inspiration. Well, I'm just going to give it everything I got. I'm not holding back one thing. <laughs> Let's go. Well, Chuck, bad news. You can't use the plunger on the way up the Versa Climber. We'll give it to you after the race. Hot course for the Gladiators, Laser and Sabre. They will watch this one with great anticipation, just like the rest of the fans here at Gladiator Arena. The Candyman, Daniel Downs on the left. The plumber, Chuck Lakata on the right. Here they go. And it's the Candyman, Dan Downs, the district account supervisor for the Hershey Chocolate Company in Temecula, California, who still has the edge. He may have increased his lead. But he's got to stop to catch his breath after the hand bite. Lakata's still going. Daniel Downs goes down. Lakata has taken the lead. This is a man just to make it to our tryouts drove eight hours from New York to Pittsburgh. And now he's here in Gladiator Arena, perhaps ready to enjoy the finest moment of his athletic life. He's a scrapper and he hasn't quit all day long. Daniel Downs now really faltering. He's only on the zip line. Chuck Licata, what a little stud, I love it. And he's got a great time going for himself, breaking the barrier in a time of 106. And that is one of the fastest we've had all year. Hats off to our plumber from New York. Daniel Downs certainly has come too far to quit. He breaks the barrier. His day is done, but he made a lot of fans along the way. Chuck, I can't believe it. I guess the kiss really worked, Mr. Plumber. Nice job. <laughs> well, I guess it did. I reached down deep, just pulled out. No, uh, I can't even tell. Gave it everything I got. Never quit. Never. Is that, is that sweeter than any hockey victory? <laughs> oh, definitely. It feels great. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us. You've been terrific. Thank you very All much. Right. $2,500, a gold medal, and some sweet, sweet memories for both Chuck Licata and Daniel Downs. So another chapter written for Lisa Miloski and all of us here. I'm Mike Adamley. See you again next week on the American Gladiators. It only comes to those who try their best.